So welcome to CMU. Welcome to the Machine Learning Department Virtual Open House. So I'm uh, Jun Yan Zhu. I'm an incoming assistant professor at CMU. Um, today I want to uh, share some recent work in the intersection of computer graphics and machine learning. Uh, in particular, I would like to talk about how we can use machine learning methods to help everyone create visual content. Uh, throughout history, people have created visual content in various forms, from the ancient cave art to Michelangelo sculpture uh, to the Impressionist painting by Claude Monet. Uh, more recently, we have computer graphics. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite movies, Life of Pi, which tells the adventure story of a little boy with a giant Bengal tiger. But who are the creators behind this wonderful work? It turns out only a few chosen talents can create visual content. The greatest sculptors you can name, well-known painters, and award-winning film directors. Why is that? Because content creation requires huge amounts of expertise, time, and manual effort. Uh, for example, in the movie, uh, professional visual artists have to specify everything just right, including skeleton, uh, geometry, uh, texture, uh, to very small details like tiger's fur uh, for a human to perceive an image as realistic. As a result, it took hundreds of visual artists, 12 months, and 60 million budget to create this content. What about the rest of us? Who may not have 60 million, what can we do if we want to express ourselves visually? So I found a simple solution during my childhood. So when I was a little kid, I often avoid homework by some random doodling. So I have a piece of paper, I sketch some comics, I erase them, and do the next bit of action. I was not trying to be a film director. I was just trying to create my own visual world on this tiny piece of paper. One thing I would like to make sure is to erase everything before my mom entered the room. Uh, it turns out a six-year-old kid did a very similar thing. Uh, luckily for him, his father, who is a Photoshop artist, spent tens of hours turning his son's wild imagination into realistic renderings. But again, not everyone is a creator or has a father with Photoshop expertise. How can we help others express themselves visually? So my long-term research goal is to help everyone create visual content more easily. So my approach is to first teach machines how to create realistic visual content automatically. The machine can do all the tedious work and fill in all the details in giving a human's simple high-level instructions. So a recent example along this direction is Pix2Pix. So in 2017, uh, based on the idea of conditional gains, uh, Philip Sola and I and co-authors presented the Pix2Pix -pix framework to translate an image from one domain into another. So during the training, there's a generator which takes the input and produces the output, and there's a discriminator which looks the input and output that are determining if they are the real input output or fake input and output. So the training takes thousands or millions of input output images, such as satellite to Google Maps. And once the model is trained, it can produce new content given new test images. So our friend Chris developed an online drawing application of pix 2 pix So the link is at the bottom right uh, corner. So here is another one. And so feel free uh, to try yourself and draw some cats during this talk. So add some jokes, uh, click the button. Uh, it's quite easy. So here are some more crazy cats created by our users. Honestly, I have no ideas how they created it. So we can apply the same idea to other types of user inputs. Here a user draws the colors representing different object classes, just like painting by number of game. So some color pixels, or tree pixels, load pixels. Uh, recently, my colleagues at NVIDIA and I presented a high resolution version of Pix2Pix uh, called Pix2Pix HD. Given the user input, it can produce a nearly uh, photorealistic image at 2000 by 1000 resolution at real time. Uh, due to its interactive performance, Pix2Pix HD allows users to 
further edit the images, such as inserting a car uh, at a particular location. I think there's something interesting happening here. I think you still give a very simple instruction, but the computer needs to do much more, like fill in all the details. It creates a shadow, adjusts the lighting of the car to be compatible with the background. This demo shows how a machine can help users create content uh, more easily. So one limitation of the above method is that they only produce one possible output. Oftentimes our users want to need more choices, want more creativity. So we can make our model uh, stochastic by by introducing relation back to Z to the system. So here we also want to make sure uh, we can infer uh, the, the Z from the output image. During the test time, uh, we can sample different random vectors and produce different results. So here's a very recent work, uh, again with my media uh, colleagues. So a user can create an ocean, uh, can paint a mountain, can sketch a beach, a user can ask for different choices um, from, from the machine, and the user can further transfer the style of a particular uh, real image to the generated result. So the user can keep drawing and keep asking machines uh, for more choices. So let's recap. I have some news for you. I think the good news is that the above approaches are learning based methods. So the same learning method can generalize well across different tasks and data sets. So helping people create different visual content. The bad news is that this kind of method requires lots of supervision. Uh, to learn a model, we need tens of thousands or millions of input output pairs. These pairs can sometimes be simulated but often they are quite expensive uh, to collect. For example, annotating object class map costs more than $10 and we need tens of thousands of them uh, to train a model. Uh, sometimes the annotation requires some, some artistic authoring. Uh, for example, if you want to translate a real photo into Cloud Monet's painting, ideally only one person can do that for you, right? And he is not even around. But to make things even worse, uh, for many uh, creative applications, the annotation is infeasible. Uh, for example, if you want to translate a horse uh, to a zebra, uh, you can't just show the input to the to the zebra and ask the zebra to do the same pose. So therefore, it would be desirable if we could go beyond the supervised learning and costly annotation to and develop an unsupervised learning method. In this setting, the only thing we, we know is that we know a collection of images from domain X, and there are the collection of images of domain Y. And the algorithm needs to figure out the correspondence and learn the mapping at the same time. Uh, in such cases, given the input horse, all we know is that the output should look like a zebra. We can do this uh, using a gain loss on the output and check if a generated image is a real zebra or a fake zebra. Unfortunately, the gain loss did not work at all. So first, the results suffer from artifacts. Second, the network tends to ignore uh, the input and keeps generating roughly the same output. So why is our model not working? Because given enough capacity, a network can turn an input image to, to any kind of zebra. So therefore we need another constraint. Uh, here we propose to use a cycle consistent constraint. In the sense, if we translate a sentence from English to French, we should arrive back uh, at the original sentence if we translate back from French to English. Even we don't know anything about French, we can tell that something went wrong if things are not consistent. The same thing here, if we translate a horse into a zebra and then translate it back, we should get the same horse as we started with. So here's how the how the math works. It's, it's quite simple. A given input image X, um, we first apply mapping G to translate into domain Y. Um, we add an atmospheric loss to check if the output looks like an image from domain Y or not. So in addition to that, we apply inverse mapping F to reconstruct the input image X. So we simultaneously optimize G and F 
uh, to minimize the reconstruction loss. We do the same thing in the opposite direction, and we call our method cycle again. Let's look at some results. So here, cycle again learns to transform an object uh, into visually similar objects, such as a horse uh, to a zebra. Uh, interesting on cycle game is the unsplice method. It also changed the background to more like African savanna environment. Uh, we can apply the model to, to a video uh, frame by frame. The result is, is not perfect. We can see some flickering artifacts, but at least you can see a, see a running house on zebra. Yeah. We can also use cycle game to transform an orange uh, to an apple. Another orange, uh, you get another apple. So here, cycle can seem to learn good correspondences across domains. It can automatically locate the orange. So we can also turn Claude Monet's painting into a photographic style. Even we don't have pair training data, we can learn the learn the visual realism from a set of natural photo photographs. Here are more results uh, more nice painting uh, to, to real images. So it always works reasonably well for Monet. Uh, as he only painted a few subjects like the sky, a tree, like water through his career. It's very friendly for machine learning algorithms. Uh, I think Hosei Hoke is a little bit struggling uh, with Van Gogh's paintings. Remember that we learned these two mappings together. Now we can also apply the cycle again to style transfer applications. Here we transfer a photo uh, to into more nice style. You can choose a separate cycle again for other artistic styles as well. So here, here Yuki OE is art style from Japan. So here is another cool application. Uh, so this is a, a popular driving game called like Grand Theft Auto 5. They can drive your car around in Los Angeles and just hang out, right? So now given a set of street view images in German cities, Cyclogan can translate a CG rendering images into a more uh, photorealistic style. And you, you can literally play, play the same game as you or anywhere in the world. You can see it's kind of from, from German because from this whole ornament, but our research was not supported by, sponsored by any, any car company. It turns out this CG to real button can help computer vision. Uh, recently, lots of people are interested in using synthetic CG images with automatic labels for training computer vision models. For example, we can train a model to segment different objects on the load, and we easily collect these labels in CG environments, as each label or each, each object is just some polygons. Uh, unfortunately, uh, directly deploying this model to real-world image, test images does not produce a very good performance. Uh, it's because the CG training data looks different from the real test images. Uh, we can apply the cycle again to make CG data look closer to real images, and we get a big performance boost by just training a model on cycle again images, which was very uh, close to the best domain adaptation method at that time. So applying uh, domain adaptation uh, on top of cyclogen images produced the best results. Since then, many groups have developed domain adaptation method based on cyclogen. So of course, I think algorithm makes mistakes and cyclogen is no exception. So here's a random dude riding a horse. Uh, perhaps we can create a new image, this guy riding a a zebra is dead. So here you are. And Sankogan got confused by the by the human skin and horse skin. It also zebrafies the logs in the background if you look carefully. So what happened? Uh, if you look at the training images uh, more carefully, we realize that we go from wild horses uh, to zebras. So, so there are no human riders, not when we have logs. In summary, I think Sankogan does not work very well given this kind of new content in the test images. Uh, since its release, 
uh, cycle gain has become a widely used toolbox for transfer transferring data across different domains. Uh, next, I will next I will describe some recent efforts uh, based on cycle gain done by other research groups in the world. For example, uh, there are many uh, graphics on uh, vision and uh, computational photography applications. A group from ETH Zurich has used cycle gain for photo enhancement, transferring bad photos to good photos. You can also re remove haze uh, from your foggy images using Cyclegen. We are also glad to see many applications from, from other fields, also dealing with imaging data, such as medical imaging, uh, robotics, uh, biology, and remote sensing. For example, field robots are trained on synthetic environment enhanced by Cyclegen uh, being deployed in a real greenhouse. We are also surprised to see Cyclegen is used for non-imaging data. Uh, such as changing the sentiment of text or transforming your voice to Obama's voice. So here one recent work has used Cyclegen to transform music between different instruments, from piano to harpsichord. So a number of visual artists have also used our tools uh, to, to create new kinds of exhibition and live performance. For example, two artists use Cyclegen um, to convert human faces into vegetable portraits. So if you have a real-time demo that allows users to create art using your own faces. So here are some training data. You can, you can create some results and maybe leave some comments. Uh, and people seem to, seem to love it. But my favorite results actually come, come from Twitter. As a cat lover, um, our dream is to transform every dog picture uh, into, into a cat one. So there are only cats kind of on the internet. But if you love, love dogs, don't worry. Remember that we learned two mappings together. We have a cat dog transformation as well, just for you. Above applications come from different fields uh, using different kinds of data, but all of them are, are based on cycle again. As our learning objective is quite general, uh, requires no human annotation and parameter tuning. Uh, in this talk, I mainly focus on learning-based methods for image synthesis. I have also done work in, in like data-driven graphics and learning-based methods for 3D data and videos. In the past, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to collaborate with researchers from computational imaging uh, to robotics uh, to fabrication to security. I'm happy to talk about any uh, project offline during our one-on-one -on -one meetings. So in conclusion, we have seen uh, many different ways of creating visual content. They are powered by the underlying technology, from the Earth's pigments to modern computers and rendering algorithms. Uh, in this talk, I present a different perspective where a machine can learn to understand visual realism and learn to create visual content automatically. This perspective is complementary to all the previous perspectives. As, I, as we can combine a 3D graphics engine with some learning-based components, an artist can first create a draft with a paint brush and the machines can fill in the details. Based on this perspective, I have presented several general purpose algorithms. I hope some of them might be useful for your own research. Finally, the most fun part, uh, I have built uh, several online content creation tools for everyday users to create images and to tell their own visual stories. Uh, with that, I would like to thank my wonderful collaborators and thank you for your attention.